Psalms number 3. Psalms number 3. We'll read four verses. And um, I'll give you what the Lord gave me this afternoon. I actually want, I had a message pre, pre, uh, prepared, actually, you know, and, and I kind of wanted to preach it. And I've been pondering it all week and, and everything. But I don't know. It just didn't. It's like it wasn't the Lord's will for me to preach it tonight. So I got to reading this afternoon, and I read the, through some Acts and, and uh, over in there, but this is where I ended up. And uh, the Lord spoke to me then in these verses here. We'll read the first four vo- verses, and um, then we'll get, I'll give you what the Lord gave me out of, out of these verses here. Psalm number three, the Bible says, Lord, how are they increased that trouble me? Many are they that rise up against me. Many there be which say of my soul, there is no help for him in God, Selah. But thou, O Lord, art a shield for me, my glory, and the lifter up of mine head. I cried unto the Lord with my voice, and he heard me out of his holy hill. Let's pray. Father, Lord, we love you tonight. We come to you once again. Lord, just asking you, Lord, that you would help me tonight, Lord, deliver this message. Lord, uh, you've laid up on my heart. I pray, Lord, you'll bring a recall back on everything, Lord, that I've studied and, and meditated on this afternoon. And Lord, I just pray that the message, Lord, would be a blessing. Uh, Lord, we know, Lord, there'll be no preaching uh, going on, Lord, unless you show up. And, Lord, I just pray, Lord, you'll touch me and you'll do the preaching. Uh, Just use me, Lord, uh, even though I'm unworthy to even stand here, Lord, and call upon your name. I just pray, Lord, that you'll use me tonight, Lord, to uh, deliver the message. And I pray, Lord, that it will not fall upon deaf ears. Lord, we give you all the glory for it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 If you remember... The last time I preached here, I think it was about it was over a month ago, I guess six weeks or so, I preached on David, and I preached on a, a, a title of Displeasing the Lord, uh, dealing with David and, and the act of um, uh, that he committed with Bathsheba and the outcome of it and everything, and, and as I was uh, reading this, uh, it came back to me, that whole message came back to me that uh, even though the, what, what happened there and, and even though the Bible says that what David done displeased God, displeased the Lord, um, God didn't give up on David. Amen? Uh, it doesn't matter what we do um, in, in our walk, in our life, God's not going to give up on us. Amen? If you're a child of God tonight, if you're truly saved uh, uh, and blood washed, God's not going to give up on you. Amen. Um, and and that, that brought me back to, to that message. And, and this Psalm number three is actually, David is actually in distress here. Uh, he's actually uh, uh, running from his son, Absalom. Uh, which is out to to kill him, you know, and, and that's a pretty bad thing. Is, is when you when your kids after you, you know. And uh, the Bible says over there in Second Samuel chapter number fifteen. Uh, I was reading over there today, trying to get to see what exactly what was going on, and it says there that the conspiracy was strong for the people. Okay, the the, the conspiracy to get David. Uh, was growing, and it says that it in, that for the people increased continually with Absalom. So the longer this went, day by day, hour by hour, uh, minute by minute, people were going against David. Amen. They, and they, they were siding with his son, Amen. which was out to kill him. Amen. And uh, as I read this here in, 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 in verse number one, it says, Lord, how are they increased that trouble me? And, and that, that's over there. Uh, that's what David con- is uh, uh, conferring to there in uh, 2 Samuel chapter number 15. Uh, and as I read down into this, uh, you know, I looked at verse number five. It says, I, I laid me down and slept. I awake, for the Lord sustained me. Even though David laid down not knowing uh, whether he was even going to wake up the next day. Amen? Uh, because he didn't know whether uh, Absalom was going to get, uh, get, get a hold of him or somebody else was. But he put his faith and his trust in God when he went to sleep, and God still sustained him, and he woke the next day. David goes on to say in verse 6, I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people that have set themselves against 
me round about. And he says, Arise, O Lord, save me, O my God, for thou hast smitten all my enemies upon the cheekbone, that thou hast broken the teeth of the ungodly. Salvation belongeth unto the Lord, thy blessing is upon thy people. So David is, is right here. You can see uh, that David has put his trust in God. Amen. He's put his trust in God, even though uh, back in chapter 11 of 2 Samuel there, uh, dealing with Bathsheba and everything, he displeased God, and God uh, uh, dealt with David in a way. David didn't get, it didn't really hinder David to the point where uh, he was going to leave the things of God. Amen. Uh, this psalm here uh, confirms that. And, and what spoke to me out of, out of this psalm here was verse number 3. Verse number 3 says, Says this. It says, But thou, O Lord, art a shield for me, my glory, and the lifter up of my head. Amen. I want to preach just for a few minutes here on trusting in God. Amen. Trusting in God. Uh, if we, when we get into this psalm right here, I, what I did was I read this right here and, and, and I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, how, how can I preach this message right here, what you've laid on my heart? And basically what I've done here, in a way, is I broke this down, this one verse broke down into three points. Amen. And let me give you these three points here because I think it's very important uh, that you know the significance of the words that uh, David used when he penned this down. So if we look at this, it says, But thou, O Lord, art a shield for me. Amen. The first point I want to bring to you is, uh, the first word is the shield uh, that David uses here. Uh, this is not just a shield that you take up that you see some of these little uh, kids use as a, uh, playing uh, uh, swords and stuff. It's just a shield that you hold and your, uh, basically guards your arm and maybe a little bit here. If you'll go back and, re and look what shield means back in them days and what David was dealing with, it's actually called a buckler. It's a buckler round about. Amen. It's, it, it protects you top and bottom. It protects you all the way around within and without. It's a protection which surrounds a man entirely. Amen. And that's what David's talking about here with dealing with God. Amen. When you put your trust in God and you fully trust in Him, He's going to be your shield. Amen. He's going to encompass you with, with His self, with His righteousness and everything to where you will not have to worry about anything. Amen. Ephesians 6 and 16 talks about this. It says above all taking the shield of faith. Amen. And when you take on that shield of faith ladies and gentlemen can I tell you uh, and put in your trust into God uh, as David did here uh, we don't have to worry about anything. Amen. Uh, uh, that shield of faith that is uh, that is in Encompassing in us, or, uh, surrounding us, uh, is there to help us shield off some things that God knows that's going to come into our lives. Amen. And the first thing that, that this thing that God is a shield from is Satan. Amen. Uh, God is a shield from Satan. Uh, when we put our faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, you can bet your last dollar. I shouldn't say that in the pulpit. It's, it's gambling, I guess. But let me tell you something. You can bet a baloney sandwich on it that Satan is going to turn up the heat. Amen. Especially for a new convert that's just got saved or these young kids as we talked about earlier. Hey, Satan is going to get a hold of these kids. Amen. He's going to do everything he can through temptations. Hey man, he, I mean, if he's bold enough to tempt, tempt the Lord Jesus Christ himself, don't you think he's going to try to tempt us? Hey man, but if we've got that shield around us, if we've got that shield of faith around us, and this buckler as David's talking about here, hey, I think we can overcome what Satan throws at us. Hey man, uh, we can we can overcome the fiery darts. Hey man, that he wants to keep uh, throwing at us as long as we have that shield. Hey man, the second thing I want to show you here is also that God is a shield from this world that we live in. Hey man, uh, this world that we live in, ladies and gentlemen, uh, 
I, I mean, we live in this world. We have to be in this world. Yeah. There's no way uh, uh, that we that we can get out of this world unless we check out of here. And, and Lord willing, we all go to eternity here. But we have to live in the world, but that does not mean we have to live like the world. We don't have to live of the world. Amen. We've heard our pastor say that before. Uh, but if we've got that shield around us, as David's talking about here, if we've got that that, that shield of faith around us here, uh, it's going to help us with, the, with that sin, uh, sin, I guess is what you want to call it, of lust. Amen. It talks about it over in 1 John. I believe it's uh, 1 John 2 and 16. It talks about the lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. Amen. And it says that it's not of God, but it's of the world. Right. Amen. And let me tell you, if we've got our trust put in the Lord Jesus, Christ like we ought to, amen, and if, we, if we've got the faith that we're supposed to have that God is going to protect us and God is going to take care of us, hey, we don't have to really worry about these temptations because God's going to be there for us to help us overcome the temptations, amen. A lot of people that, you know, there, there, there's people that's been saved and, and thank God that there's, I, think, I believe our pastor's one of them that's never had, actually had a taste of a drop of alcohol. Amen. He's never t tasted a cigarette. He's never tasted any tobacco product. Hey, I see young kids today putting this dip in their mouth, yeah. you know. And then you see pictures of them, you know, 10 years down the road with half their face gone because they got cancer and everything. But he's been fortunate enough not to ever experience any of that stuff. Right. But there's some people in this world, and I'm one of them, that has experienced it. Amen? Because I wasn't saved till I was 38 years old. So I've experienced living out in the world. Amen? And I can tell you, Satan will make that stuff look pretty, pretty good to you. Right. Amen? When it's out hot, you know, uh, me and the boys down in Bowling Green uh, last weekend at a racetrack down there and I mean it must have been 95 degrees in the shade and I mean it was just it was hot and I mean there was people walking around you know and they was drinking and stuff every now and again and I'm telling you God will tempt you with something like that he'll take you back a few years ago and he'll make that look so, or Satan will, will make you make that look so good to you that you'll consider doing it Hey, I'm serious. Hey, I don't care who you are. Satan's powerful. Amen. Huh, Satan's powerful. But I'm telling you, when you got that shield around you, it don't take you very long to remember where God brought you from. Hey, man, it don't take you very long to remember how you used to do things and how you do things now. Hey, man, hey, I like waking up on the weekends knowing where I've been. Hey, man, I like waking up on Saturday morning with a pocket full of money. Hey, man, I like knowing that I'm in my right mind. Hey, man, why? Because I've got that shield around me now. Even though Satan yeah. will throw them darts at me and he'll tempt me with different things hey man I know that God's got my back hey man and as David's here right here what David's saying there he knows Absalom's after him he knows his boy is coming to try to kill him and he knows that as the Bible says there that the people the conspiracy is growing it's stronger the people are, it's just adding two and two David knows God's got his back sure. yeah. hey man because I want to tell you something I don't think I could have down and went to sleep without God. Knowing that all these people's coming to probably chop my head off. Yep. Hey man, it's that shield. Hey man, it's, a, it, it's the shield here that David uh, uh, is, is, is putting off his trust in here in the Lord. Hey Amen. Uh, the world also, uh, 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 the lust, as we talked about there, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life uh, is not. But also there's another thing that, that Satan will use. He will try to use money. He will try to use money. He will try to lose lucre is what it's called. It's what the Bible calls it. Amen. Uh, he'll try to use lucre uh, uh, to get you out of the will of God. Hey man, how you say, preacher? How how can Satan do that? Well, he'll put that lust in you uh, to where you'll start lusting after the things of the world, and I, and I did last weekend, huh? I seen them race cars down there and stuff, and I thought, you know, if I work five jobs, I might be able to have one of them. <laughs> hey man, I was lusting after them things. Hey man, and he'll he'll put them things in front of you, whatever it might be. Hey man, money, he'll put money in you. 
He'll put you lusting after that money and stuff. The Bible says that money is the root of all evil. Hey man, that's what that's what it says over there uh, in the book of First Timothy chapter uh, uh, six and verse number ten. It says money is the root of all evil. But if we've got that shield, as long as we've got that shield around us, then we, we've got the shield to overcome. Hey man, we've got the shield to overcome. Also, let's look at here what uh, uh, David said. Also, uh, uh, but thou, O Lord, art a shield for me. But he also says. That he's my glory. He's my glory. Even though David, right now, David's in one of the worst trials he's ever been in his life. His kid is gone against him. His kid is coming to try to try to kill him. David didn't give up on God. Huh? David didn't give up on God. Why would it, why is it that when we get in a trial in our life, why is it that's the first thing we want to do? Well, let's just give up on let's just quit going to church. Huh? Why is it the first thing that happens to us? And I've talked to Brother Doug about it before. Why is it the first time, first thing, bad thing happened? Well, let's just quit. Huh? Somebody makes you mad at church. Huh? You come in church, something happens at church. Well, why quit on God? God didn't do that to you. Hey, man, we're all flesh uh, sitting here. Hey, man, we're flesh. But David didn't give up on God here. Hey man, why do we want to quit on God? Why? Because there's, there's two things here that I see. Number one is a lack of faith. It's a lack of faith why we want to quit on God. David had full faith and was going to glorify God for what, what God was bringing him through here. But as soon as things get rough on, on our part, we want to quit. It's because of lack of faith. We don't think God's going to take us. You know, what God does for David, he'll do for me. Sure and what God did for David, he'll do for you. Sure Amen. Hey, man, we have to understand that. Right. But it's a lack of faith. We think, well, you know, God's done with us. Or, or so-and-so didn't shake my hand at church today, so maybe, uh, you know, maybe they're talking about me, so I just won't go back. Mm -hmm. Huh? You know who that is? That's Satan. Because there's a good chance God's fixing to use you for something in this church or some other place at your workplace. Hey man, it's a lack of faith. Hey man, uh, Matthew 8 26 says this says, Why are ye fearful, O ye of little faith? You know what the story is there? Disciples are in the boat and they're out in the middle of the storm. And Jesus is on board with them. And they're still scared. Huh? They got the shield around them. They've got the shield on the boat with them. And they got that lack of faith that the boat's going to sink. Yeah. And there he sits. So what's he do? He gets up and says, Oh, ye little faith, why are you scared? And he rebukes the wind. Yeah. Huh? I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, when we get in our storms, when we get down and, and we're really going through a storm, if we'll just lay everything at the feet of Jesus and quit trying to do everything like I try to do and do it myself, he'll rebuke the storm. Hey man, he'll bring you through the other side of that storm just like he did here. Hey man, we see also it's a lack of fight. Huh? It's a lack of fight. David here, uh, he was beat down. He was beat down here. Hey Amen. But, but he still glorified God. When we want to quit on God, it's because we're just done fighting. We're done fighting the devil. We're done fighting the world. We're done fighting all the temptations, all the, the tricks that Satan wants to pull and all this. Kind of, it's just that we're just, we don't have no fight in us. Yeah. Hey Amen. Yeah, but the Bible says here in Galatians 6 and 9, it says, let us not be weary in well-doing. Yeah. Huh? If you're walking with God and you're living a Christian life, that's well-doing. Yeah. Hey, man, you don't have to be a preacher. You don't have to be a song leader. You don't have to be the sound man or anything else. You could just be the average Christian that wants to worship God and follow God and come in and be faithful every, you know, on Sundays and Wednesdays and sit on a church pew. You can get weary doing that. 
Hey man, Satan will put everything he can do in front of you to try to get you out of church and you have to make them decisions. Do I go with my family? Do I go to church? When you go to church, the family's like, well, you don't love me no more. So then you're feeling guilty over here. And then the families, you know, it's just persecution, persecution. The Bible says for all who live godly shall suffer persecution. Hey Amen. But I'm telling you uh, uh, that it says here, it says, uh, uh, let us not be we uh, weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Right. How do we keep going? Ladies and gentlemen, how did David keep going when his own son was coming to kill him? How do we keep going in this world that we live in how do we keep going under all the pressures all the lust that, that, that Satan's throwing the fiery darts everything how do we keep going it's a, James sums it up it says submit yourselves therefore to God resist the devil and he will flee from you so you know what James says he says put all your trust in God let God handle the situation and quit trying to do it yourself huh so see where David is here. David knows all this. David knows this. He knows that he's got to continue on with God. He knows he's got to continue on glorifying God. Because if he don't, then he's in, he's in a bad way. He's really in a bad way. So that's what David says here. He says, but thou, O Lord, uh, art a shield for me, my glory. And then he goes on to say, and the lifter up of mine head yeah. hey man though he's in sorrow I had to think about this David's in a point of sorrow right now I cannot imagine my son sitting here out to chop my head off or kill me yeah. huh how would that make you feel I mean a lot of you sitting here has got kids some's young kids I mean, I mean but still you know Satan can put some pretty pretty nasty thoughts in these kids' minds. And especially as some of these games they're playing. Because see, they can kill on that, on, on, that, on that game. They think they can go out and do it in real life. Huh? You see, you see what I'm trying to say here? David is, is in a sorrowful, sorrowful way. But he knew God would lift him up. He knew God would lift him up. That's why he pinned this down. He knew if he stick was stuck with God, that God was going to lift his head up. Hey man, I'm telling you today, I don't know where you're at today. I don't know what's in your life today that could be dragging you down. But if you'll just allow God to get a hold of you, he'll lift your head up above the water. Hey man, when you think that you're going to sink, when you think that the pressures of the world is just going to uh, just overtake you, especially you young people, if you'll just get a hold of God and allow God to, to, to get a hold of you, he'll lift your head up above the waters. Amen. That's what he says right here to David. He said, in the lifter up of my head. Amen. If, if I can say here, no matter where you are, God's there for you. Hey man, I don't care where you're at. I don't care what trial you're in. I don't care what problems you have at work. I don't care what financial problems you have. If you'll just keep on keeping on with God, he'll lift your head up above the water. Hey man, David never turned his back on God. He never turned his back on God because God blessed him. Hey man, if, if you remember the story over there after, after the deal with Bathsheba, what happened next after that? Who was born? Solomon was born. Solomon, as the Bible calls him, one of the wisest men ever. Huh? Who was his daddy? Huh? So you see, David, he, he, he did what he had to do. Huh? He suffered for his sin. He suffered for all that. But he never left God. He continued on with God. And God blessed him with Solomon. Amen? And I'm telling you, hey, you're talking about lifting your head up out of the water. Hey man, after you did what David done and you cost a, a, a one man his life and a child his life, hey man, and then God to give you another child, 
the wisest man huh that'll lift your head up out of the water see David's reflecting back on what God has done for him in the past amen and that's what we have to do we get wrapped up in, in our everyday life we get wrapped up in what's going on right now amen I mean just what's going on this week that's where we want to sit and dwell and we might want to have us a pity party as brother Doug says that pooch lip or whatever disease whatever where you want to walk around and trip on your bottom lip hey man but we have to remember what God has done for us yeah. hey man we have to go back and remember where God brought us from hey man we have to go back and remember the last time that we was in a storm or something and where we came out hey man hey if you're sitting here today ladies and gentlemen you've been in a storm in your life your Christian walk hey man and I see that you're back Hey Amen. So that tells me that God's lifted your head up one or two times and brought you out of that storm. Hey Amen. And so you're still sitting here. Hey Amen. David's reflecting back on what God's already done for him, and that's what we have to do. Hey Amen. We have to go back and remember what God's done for us. Hey Amen. As I was reading that lifter up the head there, uh, it brought me over to Psalms 23. Hey Amen. I want to read Psalms 23 to you. Hey Amen. Because I believe it fits in right in with this message right here because this is what it says. It says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Amen. He maketh me to lie, lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Listen to this. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Hey, that's what brought it when David laid down and went to sleep hey and all these people out to kill him hey that's what got me over to 23 amen I had to think David was walking through that valley of the shadow of death amen but he had that shield around him amen and he knew that God was going to take care of him and he just laid down and slept like a baby amen hey I'm telling you tonight if you're walking through that valley of the shadow of death don't fear nothing amen because he's got your back amen it says for thou art with me thy rod and thy staff they comfort me thou preparest the table before me and thy presence of my enemies thou anointest my head with oil my cup runneth over surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I would dwell in the house of the Lord forever hey man he's a lifter up He'll lift your head up, amen, when you, when you think you're sinking, when you think that there's just no, you just can't tread water no more, hey, he'll reach down and pull you right up out of that water, amen, amen, he'll lift you up uh, into gladness after sorrow, amen, I know a lot of, there's been some death going on around, people losing loved ones, amen, that's a sorrowful thing, I've done that, amen, but if we'll turn to the Lord, amen, he'll bring us out of that sorrow, and give us gladness. Yeah. Amen. He'll restore you after a fall. Yeah. Amen. He'll just he'll restore you. Hey, you know it's tough being a Christian. It is. I mean, we've done talked about the temptations and everything that's in the world. I could not imagine being a teenager today with the peer pressures put on these kids today. Amen. From their friends, from the schools, from from from, from the you know the all, just everything, the world. Amen. I couldn't imagine it. Amen. But let me tell you something. Also, he'll lift you up uh, out of defeat and he'll give you victory. Amen. Uh, let me say this in closing here, and uh, I just want you to know this. That when we're all down and we're in that spiritual drought, hey amen, I don't know if anybody's in here in a spiritual drought, hey amen, but it don't take a whole lot to get in one. I can tell you, I've been there before. The Bible tells us this, that if we'll draw nigh to God, he'll draw nigh to you. Sure. You see David here in Psalms number three, ladies and gentlemen, David was in a, he was, he, he was in that spiritual drought. I get it is his kid was coming to get him. Amen. And he turned back to God. He turned to God for all his, all his uh, help that he needed. He turned to God. James pinned it down there. Draw nigh to God and he'll draw nigh to you. I don't know where you're at tonight. That's the message. That's what God's laid on my heart to bring for, to you tonight. I don't know what to, where you're at tonight uh, as far as if you're in a spiritual drought tonight. Maybe the world's just getting to you tonight. Maybe there's some temptation in your life tonight. I, I don't know. It, it, it's very easy to be tempted in this world because sin is just is running rampant. 
It's just running rampant. You know, and, and, and I don't know. I don't know where know your background. I don't know where you came from, but just maybe, just maybe, you need to get back to God tonight. Amen. May just maybe, uh, you need to be reminded that hey, you got that shield around you, yeah. huh? You've got that shield around you. He's going to take care of you. Yeah, sure Amen. Is. But you got to come back to Him. Yes. Amen. You can't leave Him, as David said. That He's His glory. Hey man, if you're a child of God tonight, uh, Jesus Christ ought to be your glory. Yeah. Hey man, it shouldn't be nothing of this world that it should glory. Right. Hey man, that's why I, that's why I hit on that temptation, that lust of the eyes, lust of the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. Huh? That stuff of the world. Hey, we can't take it with us. Huh? And it ain't gonna do. That might give us a, a a little bit of pleasure here, but pleasure in sins just for reasons. What the Bible says. Hey man. I surely want to get on the other side over there and I hope and pray that he looks at me and says, well done. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. That's what I hope. But I don't know. Sometimes we get down and we got to get back to him. So if you're in that place tonight, Brother Clint, if you'll come and get a song of invitation together, if you're in that place tonight uh, where David is, that place of sorrow, that place of fear, you just don't know, why don't you just come back to God tonight? Why don't you just come ask God to get your back? Amen. David, he had David's back. Amen. There's no man alive that could lay down and go to sleep out in the middle of nowhere knowing all them people's coming to get him. Amen. He had to have God with him. He had to have God with him. Where are you at tonight?